This is the Yamaha Pacifica PACP12. This all bells and all whistles version answers that question, what would a Yamaha Pacifica be like if it was a professional guitar? So this made in Japan version has an older body which has acoustic design technology, which sounds very fancy, but it means what they've done is they've not just glued some older together, they've also put some chambering in it to enhance the resonance. They've also developed these pickups in collaboration with Rupert Neve Designs, so they're a little bit special, not just some random off-the-shelf things thrown in. This is the HSS configuration, but you can split the coils on the tone knob like that, and that's a master tone, and that's a master volume, which does not split or anything. We've got a five-way control there, as you'd find in any S-type guitar. Round on the back, you'll see that this is a maple neck, and it's got a contoured heel design. Up here, we've got some Goto machine heads. These are locking, and they are smooth as butter. Back round on this side, we're looking at a rosewood fretboard with 22 stainless steel frets, and these sort of, not block, but rounded edge line inlays, which I really like, and some, some fret markers on the top there. We've also got a Goto two-point trem, which has a very interesting block inside, and I'm gonna take that off in a moment and have a look and see what's going on. Let's take a break from talking about the guitar and talk about this gold and black case that comes with it. It's lockable, it's got three latches, and if I open it up, you'll notice that this is a pretty darn good case. There. Oh, all that, that Yamaha smell. Got a big old pocket just there. Um, and then you get a bunch of stuff inside, including a certificate of authenticity from Yamaha Japan, proving that this is um, a Japanese guitar rather than the, the standard. Back to the guitar, there is something glaringly obvious I haven't mentioned yet, and that is this. The truss rod adjuster is the spoke wheel at the end, and in the case you get this little bar for turning it, like so. And that's where the truss rod adjuster should be on every guitar. It's that simple. Back to the neck, it's a slim C, but it feels a little bit wider than I'm used to on a slim C because I've got big hands, I don't normally get on with slim Cs, but it is very popular with normal handed sizes peoples. So I think I think most people are gonna get on with this neck. It's 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 quite shreddy, and or if, if you can describe a neck as being shreddy, it's certainly not baseball bats. So if you're into your baseball bats, this one isn't for you. This is far from, in fact, like a 62 Strat. These pickups are voiced to be modern and poppy and have more top end and be more hi-fi rather than vintage inspired and warm and round and all those other words that we use. So that's why I did that sort of funky thing in the beginning because Yamaha themselves have told me that it's voiced more towards that style of music, which isn't gonna stop me from putting it through some distortions and stuff because we've gotta test it all, right? So. Let's run through some clean sounds to get a complete sweep of the pickups to see what they sound like. And I'll mess with the tone and the, the coil splitting as well. I'm running through the Fender Deluxe Reverb amp. I'll be running through the Tone King a little bit later as well. Some more expensive amps, hence a more expensive guitar. Let's split the humbucker and do all the single coil stuff first. I'm not going to say that you need a specific style of guitar for a specific style of music, but this does lend itself to being that snappy, honky, funky pop. And it's got 9-42s on there and a slim neck, which is not usually what I'm used to, but I'm surprised at how comfortable it feels. The neck is extremely nice to play, and it's satin soft. It's beautiful. Um, yeah, well done Yamaha for that. 
But what I'm curious about is how that, with that pokiness, is going to sound with some drive behind it. But the first thing I want to do is run through uh, an Airchild compressor from J Rocket to see if that sort of tightens it up even more. <laughs> Let's go without compressor. Can you hear the way it's just popping and clicking? I'm grooving, that's for sure. And I'm, I've not got that sound from like a regular strat. Let's just, I'm just going to put it through. Uh, put this strat through there to see if I'm kidding myself with a new guitar or if that actually is the case. Phew, okay, I was right. There is less bottom end in this than there is in the Fender Strat. It also sounds a bit louder. I don't know if that's how it sounded to you, but there was more, which is possibly why it sounded better, because the louder something is, the better it sounds. And it just seemed to be more, yeah, clear. There's more clarity coming out of this guitar, and dare I say, might be the pickups. Let's find out how it does with a bit of drive. <laughs> Obligatory dive bomb at the end to test the tune, uh, to test the tremolo. Is it still in tune? It's not far out. Let's actually use the tuner. Oh. I, I will say, by the way, these tuners are really smooth and there's not much space in between them. However, I can get my big sausagey fingers in there and they feel super solid. And this is one of those guitars that is not going to stay with me. And I'm really sad that it has to go back. So that's a great review already. It's one of those things that honestly, this guitar um, confused me when I first got it because I was told about the funk thing. But that's honestly the first time I've played this through some drivey stuff. And that was the Spruce Goose from EHX, by the way. Um, let's get rid of that tuner. And uh, yeah, it, it, it just sounds great. There's that toppiness, uh, and I think it, it might sound a bit grating on its own, but in a band situation, this is gonna rock. Right, let's um, up, the, uh, up the gain a little bit with a Rattler Jam. So Jam Pedals Rattler, which is a rat. And we'll do some sort of, I don't know, we'll stay on the humbucker because I want to. And I promise I will, uh, I will explore the other pickups in a moment. <laughs> That is quite bright. I'm going to drop the tone to lower than I would normally would on the pedal. I don't think this is akin to a Fender Strat. I think this is more sewer sort of modern Strat territory. Uh, I, I didn't like it with the Rattler. I'm not a f fan of that. I think it's a, it's a sound, um, but because it's losing that bottom end, maybe a little better, I'll finish my sentences. Because it's lost that bottom end, because this guitar is, doesn't have it, um, it sounds a bit raspy to me, but let's try it in the neck pickup and maybe that's what I should have been doing all along. I 
I think the pickups are the thing that's making this guitar brighter and less boomier than I was expecting from a guitar that looks like this. It's not to say I was expecting a lot of bottom end, but I don't know what you're listening on, by the way, but whatever it is, don't, you know, don't change the channel. It's, it's, it is bright. Let's try something low gainy blues. In fact, let's switch the, the amp to the Tone King. Let's try that. <laughs> Again, it has that toppy sound, and I, I'm getting to like it, but I can also hear where it's grating my ear, which is why I'm backing off the, the, the tone a little bit. There's also a lot of play in that tone. And a bit of, bit of crunchiness as well. the treble quite high on the amp. Let's set the amp to 12 across the board and let's see what that does. I'm neglecting the one thing that is possibly the, the biggest thing that's jumping out at me and that is the playability of this guitar. Yes, I do tend to play quite a few bum notes. I'm playing less bum notes on this guitar than I do on others. It's it's just extremely playable. And part of that is must be down to the fact that I've left out this has a compound radius of 10 to 14. Let's try a little bit of um, that spruce goose into the the um the Tom King. I just really enjoy playing the guitar. Uh, I don't mean the guitar generally. Yes, I do, but this guitar. So let's have a look at it inside and see what's going on with these pickups. If there's anything obvious to the eye, why these are different, because um, I really want to tell you how I truly feel about this, but first we've got to take a look inside. There is the pick guard off. This is that um, special cutting that I was talking about. So that's that's chambering, apparently. I don't know why that's there or what it's doing, but it does something to the sound. And there are our pickups. Um, they look pretty normal to me. That is slightly uh, anticlimactic, but at least they look good quality. <laughs> As for this humbucker, I'm going to have to take all the strings off to get that um, to get that out, and I can't do that. Or can I? No, I don't want to mess with it too much. But the humbucker is probably going to look exactly the same as that. Uh, so there are no surprises. Really? I wonder if that's conductive. Let's find out. Could that beepy beepy? It is not. It is almost. So 
That's conductive. It is conductive, but not fully. That's weird. It's definitely grounded. There are no issues that I heard at all. Um, so I can put that away when I've tested the output of the pickups, which means I've got to put them back in again. So on the bridge, we've got 7.35. Then position two, 3.54, 6.64, 3.25. And 6.19. So that middle pickup really is hotter than the neck, which is why it's so pokey, I think. And then the humbucker is hotter. Let's see what happens if we split it. We're coming out at 3.75, which is kind of odd because it doesn't feel that that quieter. I know this is not a, an indication of quiet or, or volume, I should say. 666. Um, but it doesn't feel like that much of a difference. Cool. Flip it over and have a look in this control cavity. Wow, um, there's a lot going on in there. Here's our push-pull pot, which is why it's huge. And then over there, we've got a regular pot, although it is a big pot, and it's a 250 kilo ohm pot, which says something like cable on it. I've never seen a pot like that. I've also never seen capacitors like these. They look almost glass, but I'm, I'm pretty sure, yeah, it's like a rubbery sort of plasticky coating. That's weird. And then, generally speaking, the wiring is tidy, although that could be around there. That might be my fault, though. Um, it's modern wiring. It's, it's, it's working. There's no zero problems. It's done well. It's clean. There are zero bits of stuff hanging around in there that shouldn't be in there. And that switch looks kind of regular, which we're going to talk about in the review section of this video. Right. In there is this weird... Um, block that I was talking about. Oh, it, it feels, I think that is graphite. Well, that feels really weird. There, yeah, that kind of feels, it almost feels rubberized. Like, it isn't. I need to see if that's conductive. It must be, because, yeah, it is. I don't know, I need to test it. We've got three straight springs here on that claw. There, nothing to, to write home about. There, super weird and super almost like space age modern looking. I like that. Let's just check the conductivity of this. Ooh, that's a bit better. That makes a beepy noise. Right, let's uh, round up this review because I got a few things that I'm not entirely convinced by. So the Yamaha Pacifica Professional, does it hold up? Is it worth the money? Let's talk about money. At time of filming, this guitar is going to set you back around 2,000 euros, pounds, so about 1,800, maybe a bit more, depending on where you're uh, shopping. And that's a lot of money. And there's a lot of competition in this range, the obvious one being the Ibanez AZ series, which I'll talk about in a little bit. But I will say that this is a fantastically crafted guitar. It is nothing like the Pacificas you might be picking up for a couple of hundred. It is so far from that. And it truly is a professional instrument. All the hardware, all the stuff that claims to be top, it really, really is. And it's a beautiful, beautiful playing guitar. However, the sound is the sound that you're going to have to want. So if you're looking for something old and vintagey and warm and, and with lots and lots of mojo, this isn't it, at least out of the box. If you're looking for something that is going to be reliable and pro, for want of a better word, and clean, but with that clarity, you can add the dirt in later. So like a like a blank canvas, if you, if you will, um, this is perfect for that. So yes, you can EQ things and you can get them to sound warm and do all the stuff. This has got none of that flub that comes in some guitars that you might pick up that look like this and are made by a company that begins with F. Um, this is a Strat, but it's more than while also being less than. I dig this guitar a lot, and I am mainly a Strat player. So HSS is a great configuration for a guitar that you want to be versatile. There's just a few things about it that I think are missing the mark. Number one, this switch doesn't exactly feel like it's the best switch. And there, on the Ibanez AZ, for example, you've got a super rock solid switch. This one doesn't feel much better than something that's half the price of this, which, again, this is a prototype, so this might be different on the retail version. 
Um, saying that, going straight to a positive, these knobs and switches are absolutely sublime. I love a good sweep on a volume and tone knob, and these are a joy to play. And with that knurled top that you find on the Revstar, which is what this is, this knob is the same as you'd find on a Revstar, you've really got the grip that you need. Uh, you don't have any numbers on, which frankly, I don't look at anyway, but it is kind of nice to know where they are. The Rosewood fretboard is absolutely fantastic on this. Everything that's cut is cut absolutely perfectly. And this is just a fantastically built guitar. And in my opinion, if I was working in a studio or on stage as a paid gig, a hired gun for someone else, this would definitely be on my list. I am not sure if this is going to appeal to the regular player. And there are some aesthetic choices, which I think are a bit weird. And number one being the sort of Revstar-esque uh, Yamaha coin on the headstock. I think that looks really out of place and I personally wouldn't have put it there. And I think the biggest downside of this guitar is not actually due to the guitar or Yamaha, but possibly due to our perception. And that is that Pacificas are cheap and entry level to mid level strats. And they've somehow managed to keep, keep the look of a Pacifica, which kind of makes it look cheaper than it is. However, this in the front, I think looks gorgeous. On the back, there's a lot of business going on and there's a lot of sort of, sort of hidden um, hidden ergonomic features that you're not necessarily gonna see when you think, oh, that's just a Strat. And then you turn it around and it's actually, there's a lot more going on. The weight is good, it feels like it's balanced. I will do the strap test in a moment, but before I do, I kind of wish that was recessed, even though I take my covers off. It would just look a little bit better, feel a little bit better on the body if that was sunken into the body. So let's strap test it. Okay, strap is on. And that is wonderfully balanced. It's not too heavy, it's not... It's just staying where it needs to be. Perfect. So to summarize, the Yamaha Pacifica Pro is a fantastic guitar. It is a little bit pricey, but with the quality of the parts and the work that's gone into this, it deserves to be, and it's made in Japan. So yes, there's gonna be a little bit more of a premium on it. However, I think that if Yamaha could somehow get these down to 1600 or 1500, they would be shifting a lot more. And if this is too pricey, there is the standard model available. However, I've played a few of those and they were not as impressive as this. Whereas the Revstar standards and professionals, there was less in between those two models. For me, there's a wider gap in between the standard uh, Pacifica and the professional one. So if you get to try some out, make sure you at least try the professional before going for the standard. And certainly don't pass them over thinking that this is just another Pacifica. It is not. This is one of the best guitars that Yamaha's ever produced. And if they can produce them for less money, they have an absolute winner on their hands. Right, more information about this and purchase links in the video description and first comment. I hope this helped you. I will see you in the next one. Bye-bye.